Okay, let's talk about some first steps to uh, secure your Ubuntu server. Now, these are going to be basic preliminary first steps. This does not, in and of itself, make your system secure, but they are basic first steps that we need to be aware of, that we need to do in order to secure our Ubuntu servers. Or, for that matter, any server that you're working with, whether it be Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever. All right, so... First thing is going to be we need to make sure that we keep our system up to date. And that's kind of should be an unspoken thing, but it is something that we need to be aware of. Now, if you are running Ubuntu desktop on your server, it's going to notify you every now and then that, hey, you have updates that need to be installed. If you are not running Ubuntu desktop and you're just running a command line server, you're not going to get that unless you reboot the system in which case you might, but that's going to be something that hopefully we're not doing on a regular basis. So something we do need to do on a regular basis is check for updates. So we're going to start sudo apt update, and what that's going to do is just update our apt cache. So reading package list, and it looks, and it says we have three packages that can be upgraded. I can view this doing, uh, I don't, don't even need to do this one, apt list upgradable and that will tell you things that can be updated now one thing to keep in mind is that these packages can be updated on a fairly regular basis so this is probably a process you'll want to run on a fairly regular basis and i only have a couple of options here because i actually did this out of habit just a few minutes ago so i'm going to do a sudo apt update or update never mind upgrade Update updates my cache, make sure I have a list of the most common things. Upgrade is going to go ahead and upgrade, and it's going to tell you a couple of things here. The following packages have been kept back, Apache 2 bin. So the things that said upgradable, they're actually held back from upgrading at the moment. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, the upgrade normally happens fairly quickly. Uh, sometimes, it, if there's a kernel update, it will let you know about that. If there are services that need to be restarted, it will let you know about that. Uh, the kernel update, by the way, is not going to happen automatically. You're going to need to schedule the time for that to happen. Sometimes, people will put this together on the same line. sudo apt update. And then remember the double and percent sign says run this first command. And if that works, then run this one. Sudo apt upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, even though it'll won't do much for us. And you'll see this take effect. It will do the first command and then automatically do the second. Now the other thing I want you to see here is this right here. The following packages were automatically installed, but they're no longer required. In other words, they've been superseded. Now, it's a good idea to go ahead and take off packages that have been superseded that we no longer need. And so we do that using this command. It's sudo apt auto remove. And that does a couple of things for us. These packages will be removed. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Let me go ahead and do that. Now, that does a couple of things for us. Number one, it frees up some disk space. In this case, it was 582 megabytes. Number two, getting that additional software off the system, um, less things that could potentially be exploited. Okay, so our first basic step is to make sure we have our server up to date. We just talked about how to do that. The second basic step is to lower our attack surface. Now, what we're looking for here is what ports are active on our system. Now, we're going to do that using the netstat command. If you, don't, if you run netstat and you don't have it, obviously you can see we do right here. If you not, uh, run netstat, and you don't actually have it in there, it will tell you, hey, this is how you, you need to go get this by installing that tools. So obviously I've done that already. Some Linux distros will come with that tools installed automatically, some won't. It's probably a useful thing for you to go ahead and install. Now, the way I like to run netstat, let me do this first. I'm going to do netstat dash dash help. And this is going to give me, like with almost an Unix command here, are all of the the help information that I want. And the command I like is netstat-tulpn. So T means we're going to include TCP. U means we're going to include UDP. 
L means we're going to include listening ports right here is dash L. Now that's really important because a listening port is something that my device is waiting for a connection on. So I'm waiting for something to come into this um, to this port. I'm listening for an outside connection, and that's a security vulnerability. Now, in some cases, I need that, right? I'm running a web server on here. I have to have port 80 open, but I want to know about it, and I want to know if there's anything that I'm listening on that I'm not aware of. Uh, P includes programs, display the uh, process ID or program name for sockets. Now that's only going to show up if there actually is a connection because the socket is going to be a combination of IP address and subnet mask. So if I have something that actually is connected, it's going to show me what program. And then lowercase n, so capital N is symbolic, but I want the lowercase n, which is numeric, which means it doesn't resolve names. So that just shows me my port number. And that, by the way, is what I like, right? If I do TULP without n, it's going to show me right here my SQL, HTTP, SSH, NFS. Some people really like that. Um, some people prefer the number. And I tend to prefer the number, although sometimes using the actual name is going to be helpful. So I know, for example, port 53 is uh, DNS. I know port 22 is um, SSH. Port 80 is web serving. Anyway. So that's up to you whether you like the uh, protocol name, which is the uh, without the N, or the uh, protocol number, which is with the N. Anyway, let's take a look at what we're looking at here. So this is a protocol, TCP, TCPv6, UDP. Listening ports, remember we talked about those, are where we're waiting for connections to come into. So that could be kind of important to know. These are how we lower our attack surface, is we shut down ports that uh, we don't need to be listening on. This shows what local address we're listening on. So 0.0.0.0, .0 means I'll listen on anything. 127.0.0.53, these are loopback addresses. Um, and then for an address, if they're connected. If they're connected, by the way, it's not going to show up as a listening port. It's going to show up down here uh, in a whole other list of connected ports. So... What I would do with this information is I would look and see what protocols am I listening on and do I want that. For example, I'm listening on port 22. Now, we already talked about the fact that port 22 is SSH. And we'll use SSH to connect to the system and manage it remotely. Do I want that on this? And if I do, then that's okay. If I don't, then maybe I want to shut down that service or maybe take some steps to secure that service. Okay. So between these two things, making sure your system is up to date and stays up to date and lowering your attack surface, which, by the way, this is a good thing to do every so often just to make sure that what you're listening on is still what you intended to listen on. And it also lets you know if you have some outbound connection. And I'm not connected to anything at the moment. But if you have some connections that are currently active, it lets you see what's actually going on network-wise. And I've actually found a malware before on my system where I've ran an anti-malware scan and it showed that there was no malware on it. The system wasn't behaving right. It seemed to me like it was a malware. So I ran this and I was able to see outgoing connections that were not supposed to be. And using that, then I was able to backtrack and find the malware and actually kill it manually. So monitoring this, looking at lowering your attack surface and looking to see what's connected uh, to your system or what your system is connected to on a fairly regular basis can be a very beneficial tool. And those are going to be your first steps, not your only steps, but your first steps to securing your Ubuntu server.